yet again another P10A4 intake air regulating flap on a 1.4 TSI. Um, we're going to just carry out a basic setting and uh, maybe an output test final control on the flap to see if it will actually operate. So I'm just going to go to done, go back, we'll go to basic settings. adaptation for the flap for regulating compressor we'll hit go so as we can see it's running oh, we've got no sound coming out of this unit at all it should be moving backwards and forwards but it's doing nothing and it just ends finished timed out so it doesn't appear to be working at all we now go to output tests. Regulating flap compressor. And that's now seen as running. Still nothing. Still nothing audible from this unit. This should you should hear it go click, click as it goes, rotates. Nothing. I'm just going to take this cover off of the plug just so I can uh, back pin the wires and check for uh, powers, grounds, etc. So we're just going to pop these two tabs and then open the connector up like so, simple as that. So I'm in pin one, uh, back pinning with the uh, ignition on and the plug plugged into the flap unit. I've got 5 volts reference, that's the reference for the potentiometer. Pin 3, with a back probe, I should have a good earth. And I can reference the other side of my scope lead to positive to check that. So I'm now back pinning into pin 1 and pin 2. So I've got my positive into 1 and my negative into pin 3, sorry, I should say. Um, so I'm into the 5 volt reference and I'm using the sensor ground so it will give me confirmation that my ground is good if I have 5 volts and, and I've got 5 volts on that so I'm now back pinning into the earth and the uh, signal from the potentiometer so the position of the potentiometer will give a voltage um, obviously we've got 5 volt reference the maximum it could ever give would be 5 volts but that is only for diagnostic purposes but say it's 4 volts is its maximum and it's end stop at the moment we probably drop down to half a volt or 1 volt or something like that so we're just going to do a output test and watch and see that it doesn't actually change because this is the potentiometer so if we were to move that flap that value would change if the potentiometer is working which it probably is um, and then we'll try and do this output test and read the uh, duty cycle that's going to the, um, the motor as well. So I'm now back pinning uh, pins 4 and 5. I don't know which one is the positive and the negative, but we'll um, see which way around the, um, the picture shows on the oscilloscope. And hopefully we should get a duty cycle output. It's the controlling power for the, um, for the motor to operate. So we'll go and app operate it now and look at our oscilloscope. We're just doing a uh, resistance check across the motor um, and I've got a reading of about just over three and a half ohms which I believe is acceptable from memory from the um, specifications across the motor so um, yeah that's reading correct as well just don't seem to actually have any output from the unit Yeah, go for it. So I'm just going to move the flat wall. So you can do this for a multimeter as well. We've got four volts at the moment with it completely open. And we can see it dropping down. Oh, 
we can see it dropping it down to about one volt or half a volt when it's completely closed so the potential on the side of it's working so we can see that we start at four volts with it wide open and we move down to about half a volt with it completely closed so this is why adaptation is an important basic setting of the throttle valves or this bypass flap because that is its learned position of that what voltage it feeds back to the ECU so when it's out of that range it then logs the code. So I've gone ahead and grabbed this uh, defective unit and I've decided I'm going to take it apart. Um, as I know it's not going to work afterwards and it doesn't work, it's been replaced, I'm not too worried about breaking it. So what I've used is I've used a little uh, gas powered blowtorch and started hammering a, a flat blade screwdriver and I've just started heating around the, the seam, taking the, all five bolts out and then I've hammered in my screwdriver and it is actually split apart. As you can see this bearing mounting is actually looks like it's broken in the process. It's probably not meant to come apart in that manner but they're quite well bonded together with um, whatever glue or I think it's actually somehow formed together. I don't know the you know the manufacturing process but the main reason we come in here is I wanted to see what's actually failed in here or at least get an idea what has or hasn't failed. I was expecting there to be say possibly gear failure. I see it a lot with throttle bodies and stuff like that. These are just plastic gears generally. They are plastic in this case. Um, so when we move the actual flap, well that's going to jump out because it's got no housing holding it together, but as we move the flap, it would move the this gear and you know, drive the motor, etc. So basically, our potentiometer is working on the shaft, so that's why that's reading okay on the potentiometer, because as we can see, our plug goes straight into the back side of that there. So, um... I'd say our motor is probably soaked in oil by the looks of it because everything is completely oil soaked so what's happening is the oil is actually leaking down from the intake manifold and it's actually soaking in down past the shaft seal through here and uh, it's all resulting in, in all the oil ending up in here as we can see this gear is coated in engine oil this is all from the breather basically all the breather oil is ending up in the inlet and that oil is then finding its way you can see it all over my hands, look. There's a decent amount of oil in there. Let's see if we can pull it out further and see um, maybe if we can run this motor or what's going on because um, we got a little bit of movement out of this before. Yeah, it's a bit of a poor design if that's the case. So I pulled the motor out and you can really see how much oil there was sat in the back of the housing absolutely soaked through so all I ended up doing was just pulling these two tabs downwards with a little pocket screwdriver so just bought these that way pulled them off the bottom terminals on the motor and then popped it out probably would be good if you were going to reuse this if you were going to attempt wash it out I don't know what the um, chance of success would be but maybe it's worth a go and someone obviously don't hack it apart like I have but for such an expensive unit it doesn't seem to be very well made unfortunately and we'll also note there is absolutely no seals around that intake shaft so the shaft is literally two plastic facings here the other one's broken off oh, it's the other side down there there's nothing to stop and anything leaking past that metal shaft and it's just that bearing that is pressed on there and it just must soak through the bearing go through the bearing and end up once it's in that housing there's nothing that can be done and this is all from the intake like the oil gets in the intake on a turbocharged car it's, it's part of the breather system it gets recirculated back to the intake so it's going to get pulled in to the intake pipe so this is just a poor design in my opinion really